This is what hormone therapy looks like. It's not just one patch or one pill. It's a range of options. And you have to remember what works for one woman might not work for another woman. I'm joined here with Dr. Carrie Leff. She's a physician at Henry Ford Health, and she's gonna walk us through some of these options. Let's start here with systemic hormone replacement. What is it and what does it treat? So these are systemic products and they're individual, so they're broken down. Um, some of them are just systemic estrogen and then progesterone. Again, remembering that women with uterus are gonna be taking both estrogen and progesterone. The most common thing that we prescribe is transdermal estrogen patches combined with oral micronized progesterone, which is bioidentical progesterone. Um, that can come in the form of a patch. Transdermal estrogen can also come in the form of like a little gel packet. Um, or in the form of an oral pill. Progesterone also can come in the form of an IUD, which is something that's inserted in, into your uterus and can stay there for five years. Most people know that it's like contraception, but it can also be used as menopausal hormone therapy. So systemic hormone therapy are for patients that are having systemic symptoms, most commonly vasomotor symptoms like hot flashes and night sweats, but also mood changes, sleep disturbances, other things that need to, that happen in the whole body. Um, that's what systemic hormones are for. And it comes in a gel, a pill, or a patch. Lots of different ways. You get to choose Great. what works for your life. Okay. The next category, these are all vaginal methods. Talk about those and what are those treat? So vaginal uh, hormones are in general like not systemic, right? They're, for, they're local vaginal estrogen and a low dose, really aimed at treating something called genitourinary syndrome of menopause, which is um, pain with intercourse, vaginal dryness, or even urinary symptoms. And our last category over here, this, these are also systemic hormones, but they are combination systemic. Tell me what that means and what that treats. So these are all oral products and they're combinations of uh, estrogens, different types of estrogens and different types of progestins. And they do, uh, they're all for systemic symptoms in the same way as those are. Um, this also just might work lifestyle wise for other people, for different people. And they're, um, have some little nuance to them. Uh, for example, perimenopausal women before they meet, reach menopause often can use birth control pills. Um, and then there's a, a, a product here, which is very unique actually, that does not contain a progestin, but contains a medication that's thought to lower breast cancer risk. How do you determine which method is best for which patient? So I guess the first thing that I do when a patient comes in is really just trying to define where they are in their menopausal journey. Are they premenopause, perimenopausal, early or late, or actually postmenopausal? After we do that, we focus in on what their symptoms are to try and determine what is the best um, medication for them. If they're having mostly vaginal symptoms, for example, most people can be served with local vaginal estrogen. Mm -hmm. If they're having systemic symptoms, then we need to talk about either side here. Absolutely. So what would be your message to somebody looking at this and maybe they're overwhelmed or you know they feel like they're suffering in silence? So when you say overwhelmed, I think that this is like the menu of options and I think it's exciting. Like there's not just one thing out there for women and that's what we want is choice. We want choice when it comes to contraception and we want choice when it comes to menopausal hormone therapy because the same thing doesn't work for everybody. So I, I think it's great that there's many products here. This is, this is great because we don't have to suffer like maybe our mothers or grandmothers did, right? The generation before us was not served well by the Women's Health Initiative and now that we have better information, better science, I think it's most important that we make decisions based on facts and not fears that are unwarranted. And so if we're on the side of science and understand what we should be doing and consider it safe, then I think we can make good decisions for our health. All right, Dr. Left, we thank you so much for this demonstration. Just in closing, what would you say to women who um, maybe don't know that these options are out here? How do they find somebody that can help them? Women are very curious about their options. They're getting more and more information from news uh, resources and social media and just know there's a menu of items. There's people that can help. It does sometimes take a little time to find the right person, but women are famous for advocating for themselves and they are often not shy to speak up. I always say that my menopausal patients ask the best questions. And so just keep advocating for yourself and find somebody that's educated on menopause. Okay. Dr. Leff, we thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah.